know a lot of the folks uh, listening and watching are Bitcoin holders, crypto holders, and yes. the, the scary boogeyman out there is once we have quantum computing, we can crack every code and my wallet and your wallet is open to anyone with a good quantum computer. So there's a last one, maybe it's one of many, but one that we've discussed, which is your active guard. So tell me, how are you protecting my, my Bitcoin wallet? So Active Guard, which is A Q T I V E, Active Guard again, um, bringing the AI and quantum aspects together here, uh, is critical because what's happening now um, is a, is a very big moment in the safeguarding of our data and of our digital currencies. Uh, the last time a major security protocol was rolled out to the world, Peter, was in the late seventies and early eighties. Three individuals, R S N A, Ravesh Shamir Edelman. <laughs> developed an incredible idea that we could actually exchange information over the wild and woolly west of the internet without having to meet first in a bunker. Prior <laughs> to that, we'd have to meet in a bunker, we'd have to exchange uh, keypads, we'd have to say on Monday, we're gonna use the following key and we're gonna scramble information with that and then you'll descramble with that key. So that's symmetric key encryption. Symmetric mm -hmm. because we're both using the same key to encrypt and to decrypt, right? And that's how we did things in World War I and World War II. And that's how Caesar did it with the Caesar cipher. The Enigma back. code and all, yes. Yeah, all that stuff, symmetric key. But we know the limitations of that because if we had to pay for everything on Amazon that way, we'd have to fly to Seattle every time we wanted <laughs> to exchange uh, the keys, go back, then use our credit card with that. And then somebody might find that key and go from there. But what RSA gave us is asymmetric keys. And so the private key is different than the public key. And so by doing that, I can find Amazon's public key. I can My browser can grab it. It encrypts my credit card with Amazon's public key. I send it to Amazon and they use their private key to now decrypt it and uh, charge my credit card, which makes me very, very happy. Mm. Uh, and so what we now have is a beautiful system. And that's the bedrock, Peter, of our multi, multi trillion dollar economy around the world. Without this ability, yes, e-commerce is part of it, but also ACH, wire transfers, also the ability to share information and have private patient data in your hospital. All this is encrypted and stored and protected by asymmetric key cryptography. And RSA is an example. Another example is ECC, elliptic curve cryptography. It was initially thought years ago that elliptic curve would form a bulwark, would be resistant to the quantum attack, but it turns out it's just as amenable to attack as RSA. And what we now know, and what Peter Shore showed in his 1994 paper when he was at Bell Labs, Peter Shore is now a respected scientist at MIT, and what he showed uh, in his 94 paper is that ultimately quantum computers will crack, will bring down RSA ECC and the other asymmetric key protocols that we use every single day in our phones. When you use WhatsApp and it says encrypted end to end, mm. what is that encryption? That is this asymmetric key encryption we're talking about here right now. And so uh, as quantum computer companies, the people building the hardware, there's a few dozen of them out there getting better and better at scale and scale and fault tolerant. We're getting closer to Q day. We're getting closer to that day when quantum computers will crack RSA and ECC. So the world, thank God, in this case, actually has been preparing. Um, the governments of the world, those of us in industry, academia, have been collaborating for eight years now and uh, to find a new set of protocols that would resist this quantum attack. We call it PQC, post-quantum cryptography. Mm -hmm. of course, assume quantum is here in the post-quantum world. How do we encrypt? And I'm happy to say that on August 13th this year, 2024, uh, just a bit, just about two months ago, in fact, the governments of the world announced that we now have standardized a set of PQC protocols. Uh, these are ways of encrypting using asymmetric keys also, private, public, but in a way that is not using the number theoretic um, frameworks that we had back from RSA and ECC. In fact, they're doing it in such a way that is not amenable to quantum attack. There are also other ways of protecting your data using QKD, quantum key distribution. Maybe in another podcast, we'll go into that. But bottom line is, what we had to do with ActiveGuard, we at Sandbox AQ realized that the world, every bank, every government, every telco, every individual ultimately, 
needed to look at their encryption on their phones, in their servers, in the cloud, on premises, inventory it in a scaled mm -hmm. way, and start creating a triage and then a roadmap of migration to the new protocols. For a bank, that typically takes seven to 10 years. A typical migration takes seven to 10 years. Now let's get back to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, why do we call it cryptocurrencies? Because these are based on encryption, right? That's the cryptography in cryptocurrencies. And the encryption they're based on, unfortunately, is RSA and ECC. Mm -hmm. uh, Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, each one is based on either RSA or ECC or variations thereof. And so ultimately, we've got to redo the foundations of blockchain itself. And of course, everything then built on blockchain will then be helped, be it cryptocurrencies or other blockchain types of applications, digital contracts, uh, and, and so on and so forth. And so that's going to be work to be done over the next five years. I'm hoping, and I put out an invitation now mm. to the blockchain community, let's start working together to start migrating uh, these applications over time. Because what we don't want is for someone to have a real-time quantum computer in the future, be able to see that your transaction is about to go through of your spend, of your transfer of Bitcoin, and then be able to spoof in at that moment and double spend uh, that particular coin um, that that could happen in the future. The quantum computers do not exist today to do that, but that's why. Look how long it took to fork Bitcoin in terms of uh, the kind of forks we've had to do over the years. This takes time. We've got to start now.